Good morning, family. Alafia. My name is Lorelai Williams, and I'm a daughter of Oshun, initiated in the Afro-Brazilian uh, religion of Candomblé. And this morning, we're going to pour libation in honor of our ancestors, those cultural warriors who have paved the way for us to be here today. speak your names. Yeah. Nina Simone, Maya Angelou, Mary McCabe, we speak your names. Oscar Michaud, Paul Rosen, Ron Miner, Sekou Sundiata, we speak your names. <coughs> Vincent Smith, Thelonious Monk, Yusef Iman, Yuri Kochiyama, we speak your names. We speak your names, we speak your names, we speak your names, and please speak the names of your elders and ancestors. Call them out with me. We speak your names, we speak your names, we invite you here, we love you, we thank you, and we speak your names. Somebody blew up America. All thinking people oppose terrorism, both domestic and international. But one should not be used to cover the other. Somebody blew up America! They say it's some terrorist, some barbaric Arab in Afghanistan. It wasn't our American terrorists, it wasn't the Klan, or the skinheads, or the them that blows up nigger churches or reincarnates us on death row. It wasn't Trent Lott, or David Duke, or Giuliani, or Shunla, Helms retiring. It wasn't the gonorrhea in costume, the white sheet diseases that have murdered black people, terrorized reason and sanity, most of humanity, as they pleases. They say, who say, who do the saying? Who is them paying? Who tell the lies, who in disguise? Who had the slaves, who got the bucks out the bucks? who got fat from plantations, who genocided Indians, tried to waste the black nation. Who live on Wall Street, the first plantation? Who cut your nuts off? Who rape your mom? Who lynch your pa? Who got the tar? Who got the feathers? Who had the match? Who set the fires? Who killed and hired? Who say they God? Still be the devil. Who the biggest only? Who the most goodest? Who did Jesus resemble? Who created everything? Who the smartest? Who the greatest? Who the richest? 
Who say you ugly and they the good looking is? Who define art? Who define science? Who made the bombs? Who made the guns? Who bought the slaves? Who sold them? Who call you them names? Who say Dama wasn't insane? Who, 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 who? Who stole Puerto Rico? Who stole the Indies, the Philippines, Manhattan, Australia, and the Hebrides? Who forced opium on the Chinese? Who owned them buildings? Who got the money? Who think you funny? Who lock you up? Who owned the papers? Who owned the slave ship? Who run the army? Who was the fake president? Who the ruler? Who the banker? Who the devil on the real side? Who got rich from Armenian genocide? Who the biggest terrorist? Who changed the Bible? Who kill the most people? Who do the most evil? Who don't worry about survival? Who have the colonies? Who stole the most land? Who rule the world? Who say they good but only do evil? Who the biggest executioner? Who, 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 who? Who own the oil? Who want more oil? Who told you what you think that later you find out is a lie? Who, who? Who found Bin Laden? Maybe they Satan. Who paid the CIA? Who knew the bomb was gonna blow? Who know where the terrorists learned to fly in Florida, in San Diego? Who knew why five Israelis was filming the explosion? Cracking their sides at the notion. Who need fossil fuel when the sun ain't going nowhere? Who make the credit cards? Who get the biggest tax cut? Who walked out of the conference against racism? Who killed Malcolm Kennedy and his brother? Who killed Dr. King? Who would want such a thing? Are they linked to the murder of Lincoln? Who invaded Grenada? Who made money from apartheid? Who keep the Irish a colony? Who overthrew Chile and Nicaragua later? Who killed David Sebeco, Chris Hani, the same ones who killed Biko, Cabral, Neruda, Allende, Che Guevara, Sandino? Who killed Kabila, the ones who wasted Lumumba, Manlane, Betty Shabazz, Princess Di, Ralph Featherstone, Little Bobby? Locked up Mandela, Deruba, Geronimo, Asada, Mumia, Garo, Yasho Hammond, Alfea Sutton. Who killed Huey Newton, Fred Hampton, Medgar Evers, Mikey Smith, Walter Rodney? Was it the ones who tried to poison Fidel? Who tried to keep the Vietnamese? Who the devil on the real side? Who got rich from Armenian genocide? Who the biggest terrorist? Who changed the Bible? Who killed the most people? Who do the most evil? Who don't worry about survival? Who have the colonies? Who stole the most land? Who rule the world? Who say they good but only do evil? Who the biggest executioner? Who, 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 who? Who own the oil? Who want more oil? Who told you what you think that later you find out is a lie? Who, who? Who found Bin Laden? Maybe they Satan. Who paid the CIA? Who knew the bomb was gonna blow? Who know where the terrorists learned to fly in Florida, in San Diego? Who knew why five Israelis was filming the explosion? And cracking their sides at the notion. Who need fossil fuel when the sun ain't going nowhere? Who make the credit cards? Who get the biggest tax cut? Who walked out of the conference against racism? Who killed Malcolm Kennedy and his brother? Who killed Dr. King? Who would want such a thing? Are they linked to the murder of Lincoln? Who invaded Grenada? Who made money from apartheid? 
who keep the Irish a colony, who overthrew Chile and Nicaragua later, who killed David Sebeco, Chris Hani, the same ones who killed Biko, Cabral, Neruda, Allende, Che Guevara, Sandino, who killed Kabila, the ones who wasted Lumumba, Manlane, Betty Shabazz, Princess Di, Ralph Featherstone, Little Bobby, Locked up Mandela, Deruba, Geronimo, Asada, Mumia, Garo, Dasho Hammond, Alfea Sutton, who killed Huey Newton, Fred Hampton, Medgar Evers, Mikey Smith, Walter Rodney. Was it the ones who tried to poison Fidel? Who tried to keep the Vietnamese oppressed? Who put a price on Lenin's head? Who put the Jews in ovens? And who helped them do it? Who said America first and okay the yellow stars? Ho, ho! Who killed Rosa Luxemburg? Good morning. Thank you, Diane and Lorelai, for bringing us into this day. My name is Kathy Engel. I'm the chairperson of the NYU Tisch, now I can see, Tisch School of the Arts, Department of Art and Public <coughs> Policy. And it is my honor and privilege to welcome you today. Thank you for being here. Give yourselves a round of applause just for being here. It's a beautiful day. We're right next to the park. So we know why we're here in this room, right? I want to call up to stand up and make yourself visible, the co-sponsors of this one day gathering. Jaira Placide, the Associate Director of the Institute of African American Affairs at NYU. Thank you. Thank you for your work. And Robert O'Mealy, Institute for Research in African American Studies, Columbia University. Thank you. And thanks to all your students as well. Sinaida Mendez, from Manhattan Neighborhood Net Network. Thank you for your support. My colleague and friend and mentor, Dr. Martha Moreno Vega. Can you come a little closer, please? <laughs> I want to thank, um, there's so many people, there's always a team, right? So I would be here all day if I named everyone, but I particularly want to call, attention, call your attention in the program to the original organizing committee because it's always a vision, right, that starts anything. So let's just give a round of applause to the or organizing committee who really thought up bringing us here today. All the, the staff of CCCADI, Hello. <laughs> and the staff of the Department of Art and Public Policy. <laughs> I want to also call out HowlRound TV and very particularly mention Emily Brown, Kristen Kalaki, Regina Bultron Bengoa, Janet Sackey, Crystal Marich, Antonio Lyons, Courtney Brown, Peter DiGennaro and all the students and staff in the different groups who brought us here today. Thank you so much. If I forgot to name anyone, it is because there are so many always. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to share with you in the spirit of honoring those who came before, I just want to share a very short poem by a dear sister, a poet, who left us too soon, but is definitely present here today. Sophia Henderson Holmes. <laughs> ML King Day, New York City, 1989. 
Sophia Henderson Holmes. We are here at one of the campsites of the dream, still far from the mountaintop, still. We the women, we the children, we the men, black, brown, red, yellow, white, we've heard the speeches and prayers. We've been in the wars, we carry our dead. At times, as casually as air, the hopeful and the wounded sit closest to the fire. Soon it will be morning again. Soon it will be time to march again. <laughs> Sophia Henderson Holmes. And of course, I join in my thanks to Amiri Baraka. Thank you. I want to also thank Nestor Otero. Look at that poster, isn't that gorgeous? Thank you, Nestor. Are you here? Is Nestor here? Could you stand? Please stand. Gracias. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. And you know what it is to make a poster for a group, right? All the backs and forths and changes. Thank you. Um, Bef we're going to next uh, have a slideshow offered by Kwame Brathwaite from the Patrice Lumumba Coalition, followed by Felipe Luciano, poet, chairperson, Young Lords Party. Before we do that, I I've been asked to be the housekeeper and to um, make some announcements. The restrooms are upstairs, so you go to, to the right out of this door and up the stairs, or you can take the elevator. Not hard to find, just at the top of the stairs, straight ahead or to the right. Um, how to purchase black Renaissance noir. Is that a question? Did you bring that? No? It's, it's on the website. OK, so at the registration table, we can tell you that. Um, the story project. Uh, our students are asking that the panelists, after each uh, at 12 noon and at 5.30, and we'll be escorting you. Go to, there's a corner set up. Sophia, is that right? Um, do you want to describe it? Thank you. Um, before we move on to our program, thank you, Sophia. Thank you for all the work. Um, I want to just uh, honor uh, the person who really built the Department of Art and Public Policy, who is very much present today, and that is Randy Martin. Just want to. And on a very personal level, I want to thank my dear friend and my sister, Valerie Marvin Maynard, for coming here from Baltimore <laughs> for, because uh, the work is really built on relationships. And Valerie, you have mentored so many people. You have made so much work. You have led so many of us, uh, including me. And so I wanted to particularly thank you for being here today with us. Now we're going to have a slideshow. Kwame Breathwaite. Thank you. Oops. Thought you were my friends. Maybe you put me between Baraka and. <laughs> Felipe, <laughs> I'm not a, uh, a speaker, I'm a photographer. And I've been covering events, well, for 57 years, African liberation struggle. Um, not just covering it, but helping to organize with um, um, several groups. 
um, here in New York, basically, but closely tied with the, the movement and the various uh, um, liberation groups in Africa, particularly Southern Africa. Uh, we are very close to SWAPO, Southwest African Peoples of Organization. Um, we first met them, well, let me follow the slides here. <laughs> Uh, this is Carlos Cooks. This is uh, Carlos Cooks, the African Nationalist Pioneer Movement, who was one of the, the leading um, nationalist movements. Matter of fact, the only organization that had um, was built and in, in the name was African Nationalist. All right? And this, they started um, in 1943. The Agarbeite Movement, who um, was formed after Garvey's death, but anticipating it, got a permission from Garvey to form a new movement. I couldn't take too much on the slides, but this is part of the uh, previous slide. It was uh, um, African, uh, it was uh, Marcus Garvey Day Parade, which they celebrated every year and still do. Of course, he's passed now. Right? Now, he got involved in, African, in uh, the African liberation struggle. In 1960, when I say we now, I'm talking about myself and others, my brother, Yvonne de Graff, and um, others who um, really started organizing mass demonstrations against South Africa and such. And we did that after hearing uh, of a speech made by uh, 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 Yomo, uh who was the leader of South Africa Southwest African uh, Liberation Movement um, fighting South Africa. And uh, that was in the, in the, on a the desk there at a meeting called with my Carlos Cooks uh, when they heard of the speech he made at the UN and uh, invited him to speak to the people of Harlem and that's how the movement uh, uh, came on. Um, shortly after that, we, we formed the Grand National Models and um, um, the Black is Beautiful Movement that uh, that stretched not only across this country but across the world uh, to give the dignity and uh, and support of uh, uh, African women and when I say African women I mean us here you know all of us right this is a a group of AJs and Grand National Models group AJs was a um, cultural group that um, pushed the movement, and the Renaissance models were the models that pushed the, which is all one group. Um, the Black is Beautiful campaign here, and some of the people, Park, um, at Marcus Garvey Park, um, prior to a shooting to um, promote the shows. That's, that lasts from 1962 to 88. Uh, there's some of the Grand National Models here, uh, some of the original group and whatnot. And as, the group, as I said, the groups continue for that long. There's a, a group shot in 1968. Some of the posters of some of the uh, shows that we did, uh, the Black and Beautiful shows, the African Liberation Struggle pieces, et cetera. This is Alame Braff, the founder of AJS, uh, co-founder, myself, my brother, and a handful of others were um, artists who were uh, um, graduates of uh, high school of industrial art. This is Alame Baraka, um, um, is Aristide, and Father Lucas, and someone else. Well, anyhow, this was a thing we had for RST when he came here and we had a little function for him at uh, the Schomburg and uh, County Club. Uh, this is what's it, June 10th, um, 1990, when um, we brought, we didn't bring him over, but we hosted um, Nelson Mandela on the left. I don't know if you can see it, but the contrast to where it is. Uh, uh, at, uh, in Harlem, in front of the state office building, 
which uh, ran all the way about three or four blocks. Um, uh, about 200,000 people was estimated by the city. And this is my brother, Lame, who was the uh, head of the organization, uh, greeting him, who was the, the, the host of, uh, of the, um, the Mandela celebration. And we had Yoruba Ben Mahar, just on the right before, who also did 27 years in prison for his political activities. Well, he is Black Panther Party as opposed to uh, uh, ANC. Okay. Not opposed to ANC, as opposed to Mandela representing ANC. <laughs> Um, and so some of the, the folks that were part of the, 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 the struggle and presenting it. Okay, and this is Sam and Yomo. Uh, his inauguration. We, we helped them from the time from 1960 until his inauguration in 1990 uh, when the battle had, was finally won when they, along with Cuba and uh, other um, Mozambique and Angola um, to defeat the South African army. You don't hear too much about them saying defeat the South African army. You, the way they, they produce it, they, they talk there about it now and they write about it. It's like the, when they, uh, 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 the clerk just woke up and said, oh, I think we're going to have you uh, give you our independence. I know he might have been thinking ahead because even though we have our independence in South Africa, it doesn't look, look that good because the same 20% that own and control all of the, the wealth there still owns and control all the wealth. But, um, we have to be speaking on that sometimes later. This was Mandela being sworn in. Come back here, please. Yeah, Man, uh, uh, these are the photographs I've taken throughout here and other African countries. Uh, uh, this is Mandela's inauguration in South Africa. I was there to, uh, invited by ANC to cover the events and to, uh, uh, to be there at that glorious occasion uh, since um, we were so part, so much part of the struggle in helping them while they were here. Uh, here are some of the dignitaries uh, that came from various nations and whatnot uh, to celebrate Mandela's inauguration. Next. Mm -hmm. And of course, you see who was dead center. Um, the person that they should be talking about when they talk about the liberation of, of South Africa and Namibia. Because if it weren't for um, the intervention of Fidel Castro, right. that would, that he would still be, you know, having the clerk or somebody at the helm. It looks like he is anyhow, but um, that was, we have to give him credit for, and the, and the people of Cuba for, assisting when Africa called and nobody answered, Fidel answered. And 66,000 Cubans, civilians, volunteered to help fight that struggle and joined with ANC and uh, Namibia as well as uh, um, uh, Angola and Mozambique who provided the, 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 the bases uh, in their countries and took a lot of heat for it and a lot of uh, damage um, because of that. Um, there are a couple of things, uh, and uh, I know I'm going on a little longer than I am, so I'm gonna just speed it up there. And uh, of course, you see the crowd there with Mandela in the lunch. Uh, continue, please. That's it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Paul. I would like to make an announcement. There should be no refreshments in this room. That you're not, not supposed to have any food in the room. So thank you. Please uh, acknowledge that. Our next presenter, also, if you notice, this is kind of relaxed presentation form. Nobody's been asked to give formal papers. They've been asked to talk about their life experience, and all the people participating have uh, been practitioners in the terms of the struggle that we're talking about. So, and, and if you want the bios, the full bios are in the, the brochure put together for the program. So please, you can just pick up a brochure and follow along too. Our next um, presenter, uh, he's, who's actually going to orient this panel, and it's Felipe Luciano. <laughs> Felipe is looking uh, decidedly presidential today, so we, we decided to have President Felipe. Thank you, Danny. How are you, beloved family? You know, uh, when we greet 
and you see me looking amazed, it's that I'm amazed that so many of us made it. We were not supposed to. I, when I greet you, I kiss, and I smell you, uh, and I receive your light. Um, hi, Jenica. Because I am amazed that we made it. We are walking miracles. There are three people who are here today who I'd like to stand up because they have had such an impact on my life. They're three women. And being known as a male advocate, sometimes male chauvinist, um, I thank God for their presence. The first is my mentor, my sister. I think could have been my wife, but she said she would have killed me. Dr. Marta Moreno Vega. The second is a woman who labors um, silently, but labors intensely for the aesthetic of black Latinos. Um, I love her. I think she's an amazing woman, Zenaida Mendez. Dominican, Dominican. Do it. And the third is a person I met 40 years ago um, at Queens College Seek who amazed me with her, with her lucidity. She would point me out all the time and put me right up against the wall, verbally, of course, sometimes physically. She happened to come from Harlem, from Spanish Harlem, and I haven't seen her in about 30 years, but she's an incredible writer, an incredible woman, and I've loved, I have one, always wondered where she was. I saw her today, I didn't recognize her. Alexis DeVoe, would you stand up, please? Bad sister. Bear with me as I go through this. Art and creativity, family, have always been about humanity, about inclusivity. And very often, adults stifled with the weight of family and um, the specter of imprisonment or professional discredibility, um, do not stand up to the plate. And very often the youth will hear the trumpet call and meet the challenge. And it's not that we are getting old, it's that the frame of reference for us is slightly different. It's easy to punch somebody in the face, and I've done it often, out of impulse, out of reaction. As you get older, you learn that there are subtleties and nuances and things that maybe are not so black and white. But the youth, thank God, have a very different attitude toward aesthetic and toward politics. Um, they fight injustice in a different way. It was the youth of the 60s who poeted, who painted, who danced, who sculpted, who wrote, who broke through the bubble of lies America placed over the minds and bodies of its citizens. And that art morphed into a political movement that changed the country, changed the consciousness of people of color. Guided by the Black Arts Movement, and you saw it up here, there I am, and, um, and Amiri Baraka. And not enough can be said about what Amiri meant to us. Remember, here's a man who was born in Newark, educated at Howard University, that has turned out more middle class dwarfs than you can shake a stick at, including the entire uh, historically black colleges. Let's just be honest. We have created a black bourgeoisie, which in its own way is necessary, but if it doesn't produce a revolutionary consciousness, then what are we talking about? So now, um, out of that, he decided, he's in the village and had an epiphany after Malcolm was shot. For me, it was Martin Luther King. It blew me away. Martin Luther King, when that happened, my whole, I took it to the next level. For him, it was Malcolm. And he came to Harlem, and let's, be historically correct, he was not welcomed. The Black Lives Movement started in 1964. He came to Harlem and told people, not only should you produce an aesthetic that's revolutionary, your politics has to be revolutionary. So he began to separate the Western notion of art and politics. When Robert Redford started talking about uh, uh, his Sundance and was talking about what was the injustice in America, he was lambasted. When George Clooney talked about uh, what was happening in the four, he was lambasted. Folks, we must be careful that we don't allow the American panacea, the Kool-Aid, to affect the way we think. 
Art is the only way to do that. Art that morphs into a sort called politics. So he came to Harlem in 1964, and um, he forced these primordial feelings out. First of all, he began to criticize black politicians, which apparently in the days of nationalism, cultural, you weren't supposed to do. They threatened him. He was shot at. And that's why he left Harlem and went to Newark and started the Spirit Ensemble Players. This is a history that you should know. It's not that he just voluntarily left. There were folks in our community who made that happen. Um, we heard and appreciated uh, Western music, but Mozart and Bach and Beethoven um, never made you smile like Miles. Never made you dance like Machido and Eddie Palmieri. Never made you jump in the spirit like Kirk Franklin or fall to your knees like Mahalia Jackson or Dr. Martin Luther King. There was a difference to our aesthetic. But it not only changed the black aesthetic, it changed white folks too. Let me tell you something, everything that we should be very proud, everything that is happening in America happened then. The movement that was started that affected the women's movement, affected black kids, affected white kids, things are beginning to change. And I contend that it's that revolutionary zeal and spirit that's beginning to affect the continent of Africa and of course the entire uh, space of Asia. Uh, look what happened in Hong Kong. And affected also the Muslim, the Muslim nation, and Islam is going through a reformation right now. We see it as a war, but it's a reformation, very much like the Christian Reformation, um, with the killings included. Um, we changed the war. 55,000 American lives were killed. Out of that arc came the last poets and the East Wind, the East in Brooklyn, the New York Rican Poets Cafe, and Miguel Algarin, Eddie Figueroa's New Rican Village. Out of that arc came Don Lee, Third World Press, Woody King's New Federal Theater, um, the National Black Theater in Barbara Ann's here, the New Breed Clothing that popularized the dashiki, uh, the Grandassa models that showed black women in their fullness and in their beauty. Black arts flourished all over the country. I was blessed and privileged to have been at the core of it. And I will end with this, because Danny's giving me that sign. <laughs> I will say this. I am blessed and honored to have been a black Puerto Rican involved in both movements, both Latino and black, to the core, where we put our lives on the line. And I will, I will just say this. There will come a time when those of us who are in our 50s and 60s will be asked to make a final commitment. It is not over. Young people don't have a frame of reference of victory, so they don't know how to fight. I've never seen this before. A species that is attacked and it stands there and allows itself to be attacked and produces art that does not address the injustice is a species that is willing to die. And I don't mean dying fighting, I mean dying needlessly, dying like martyrs, not warriors. People ask me why, how, what do we need to do? How, do, what do, how much do you need? Your children are being killed in front of you. Your grandmothers are being killed in front of you. There's a 12 year old in St. Louis had a pellet gun and in 12 seconds they killed him. There was a kid in the Bronx who ran into his grandmother's house, they beat his grandmother and killed him in front of his grandmother. How much more do you need? There will be a time where you, the elders, will be asked to stand up and be counted and say and do more. We need educational warriors, we need cultural warriors, we need political warriors, we need physical warriors. You will be asked to do it because the kids don't know. They've never had a victory. They don't know about the Panthers. I can't believe it. Stanley Nelson just put out a film and people are standing up saying, you mean the Panthers were not terrorists? They didn't want to kill white people? It's unbelievable to me. I have every kid coming to you. My father was a young lord. I said, your father's lying to you. <laughs> I know most of them. We have a girl, who, a lady here, who just did a Million of the Young Lords. Great film if you get, get a chance to see it. Talks about a young girl's evolution into the young lords in that mentality. Folks, you will be asked to fight. I don't know any other way to say it. I pray that we meet the challenge because for me, if you have nothing to die for, you're not fit to live. Thank you very much. Thank you, Felipe. Felipe didn't talk about his long history in the arts, but we want to thank him for that also.
we should learn about it in, in his bio too. Our next presenter will be um, Antonio David Lyons, who actually represents a new generation of kind of multicultural, multi-nationalized, uh, you know, Africans in the, from the Americas. Thank you. How are you all doing? Great. Ooh. I'm, um, I'm trembling a little bit. Because that's what I thought. Can you guys hear me? Can you, is that better? Can you? Okay, cool. How about a thing on? Um, my name is Antonio David Lyons. It's a pleasure to present some of this work with you. Uh, this is an excerpt from a piece called We Are Here that was born in South Africa. Um, we continue to do work with men and boys in South Africa around identity, masculinity, and gender-based violence. Um, it's a place I've called home for the past 12 years. And this particular excerpt is called It Was Hot. It was hot. I mean, one of those clear blue sky days where nothing seems to separate you from the insistent fire tip rays of the sun except the hope that you might make it to your destination before you have to wipe another drop of sweat from your tension creased forehead and lay to ponder the damp spot left on the side of your pants. It was hot. I mean, and people move slow as if it would make the heat of the day pass over them more quickly. But my pace is a little faster as New Yorkers are wherever they go, but a beat later, I slow my rhythm to match the pace of Johannesburg and her people well-versed in heat and exhaustion and hunger. Well, you see, I recognize it because I too am hungry after running around this busy city in the midst of construction mayhem. I mean, roads dug up, leaving gaping wounds of red earth revealing piping tendons and wiry veins and, and buildings, buildings rising speed and certainty and, and traffic diversions leave commuters confused and reside and everywhere throngs of people going nowhere slowly and it is hot and my day is almost done. I shall bust off it in a deeper residence than most non-Africans use. I've learned that the right inflection can keep me from missing my mark. I unfold myself from the back seat where four bodies have been wedged together with two little leg room and not enough space for rums to breathe. And I'm out on the sidewalk and I'm about to cross the busy intersection of Queen and Langerman and I raise my tired, weary eyes and a couple about a block ahead having a public dispute. And I watch them, you know, silently play out this dance. And my pulse quickens and my, my hot, hungry body's amplified irritation level goes to red alert and, and, and my throat tightens and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth like I just ate a spoonful of peanut butter. I mean, I, and I, my st steps speed up and I want to do something. I mean, I can see where this thing up ahead is going, the bottom one is going, and she pushes him and jumps in his face. He sidesteps and continues his forward motion. She spins around, unwilling to be dodged. He fades left. Determined to continue moving forward, I'm willing to stop and listen and address her needs. And she's so determined to drive her mark, she misses the signs that on a too hot day, anything can happen. And so I watch. Anticipating the need to intervene as the heat of the day drives eternal thermostats to explosions of slow thoughts and fast action of hands on flesh. And just at that moment of no return, I think they become aware that they are not alone on this slow-moving, baking sidewalk and stop. Their demands for something I know not what. And I release my attention to my body and I stroll past. And he refuses to meet my sideways glance and she seems to be in a world all her own. And I say, oh. Body just focused on getting home on this too hot day. Thank you. Yeah. One quick question. So generally when I use this piece um, in a workshop atmosphere with young men, one of the questions I ask is why doesn't anybody get involved? 
And I'm asking the same question. Why do you think nobody gets involved on that slow moving, baking sidewalk, lots of people around? Just think about who's there. People going to shops, going to school, work, traveling. Why? <laughs> Did everybody hear her? Okay, over here. The fear of violence. Okay, what do you mean the fear of violence? Many of us aren't prepared to address violence head on. Uh, I think that a lot of times when we see violence, uh, when we're in the presence of violence, all of us are not equipped to respond to it. So when you see violence, your natural instinct is to either run from it or run towards it. But if you run towards it, you now understand you are now going to be a part of that violence. I don't think that many of us are really prepared for what is going to be the outcome of that. So instead of engaging in it, it's easier to say, I don't want to engage. Thank you. Did you say two more? There's one back there and one over here. I think that um, at times people sedate themselves from their own environment. So they're, they're basically not present themselves within, within their own surroundings due to Trauma, fear, etc. There's one last hand over here. A lot of people are not aware of the art of uh, conflict resolution, and there is that fear of hurting some people that they're afraid to be with, and they think that will happen to them. So I just would like to say thank you, blessings, and leave you with the thought: What will you do, and how will you do it? Okay. Our next presenter is Dr. 